you know as long as you got time you got everything as long as you have time and we have time and over time things change I guarantee you over time a lot changes and sometimes often times there's a lot of individuals that don't like change they want to be stuck in their own ways in their own time they kind of want time to stand still and pause and never move forward those are the people that always complain about new things they're like i like when we did it this way you've heard them say back in my day and you're like, well, what's the context of that? Because back in your day, there was probably something that other people weren't able to do too. There's always a flip side. There's always two sides to everything. So you can say back in my day, I was able to do X, Y, or Z. But you can't say that everyone back in your day was afforded the same liberties and rights. They got us in the basement at Kennedy King College because they're concerned that I'm going to make a bunch of individuals who are very, very influential and powerful upset but I told them I'm speaking with the sisters of the ministry and they know the truth stands out clear from falsehood they'll know they're my ride or die crew it's a pleasure it really is You know, I don't know if they tell you or what they tell you anymore. Every time you pin them down on something, they switch it up. It's kind of like a business that's running something shady. And that's really all religion is. Not just one particular religious denomination. All of it. It's the longest running business on this planet. Religion. It's a promise of something that you cannot attain whilst you're here in this realm. But you're told if you do certain things you give tithe 10 to 20 percent then you sow your seed when you transition you get a mansion when you're in heaven now i never really understood a couple of things one why the homie, and I do say that respectfully, the homie, why the homie has so many houses and yet the people who could be living in those houses are unhoused on our street in tents. There's so many houses of worship and the person who they're worshiping never visits any of these houses, doesn't pay rent 
doesn't play electricity. And these houses could house the unhoused that we have in our society. And yet they say the house is for the Lord. But nobody's ever seen the Lord pay rent. I just want to make that clear. You know, they don't tell you a lot when you go looking for information. You pay tithes and you're going to get your mansion in heaven. But if everybody who claims to be in a denomination pays some kind of donation to the institution of religion, how much does it add up to? Does anybody know? Well, in 2019, the American church, the institution in this country, I'm talking all denominations across the board, they made and collected $128.1 billion. A hundred and twenty-eight point one B with a B dineros dollars. Now, sisters of the ministry, remember you're paying tithes for the pantry, the store pantry. You're paying for a rainy day, you're paying into a trust fund. And the churches are supposed to store up goods for you as a parishioner and for anybody really that needs assistance. I think it says somewhere in that book that everybody talks about, about the store pantry being for all the children. That means everybody. So I just told you they collected $128.1 billion. My next question, sisters of the ministry, do you know anyone, anyone who received any money of that $128 billion that the American church collected? in 2019. Anybody in your neighborhood? In your church group? Receive any type of check written for their rent? A stipend for their food? You know that the government subsidizes food. The church knows this. And they were able to raise 128 billion in 2019. And I hear they've been raising 128 billion every year for a long period of time. But I don't know of anyone that's ever said. I received a lot of financial help from the church. Now, to be fair. A long time ago, I was affiliated mostly to a religious institution, working on a secular base to provide funding, emergency funding, for senior citizens to stay housed. This money was being funded by the state and federal government but it was being distributed by a nonprofit. I just want to make that clear. This wasn't church money. This wasn't the tithes money. This was federal and state and local money subsidizing. Many of these individuals were members of the church. They might not go every Sunday. But at some point in their life, 
They were parishioners of some type of church, if you live in America. And yet, none of them had ever received any money in the mail from the church. None of them had ever been canvassed by their local churches in their community. They knock on the door and ask, Miss Turner, are you okay? Do you need any food? But then when you see the pastors with private jets and huge mansions and Rolls Royces, you're like, wait a minute. The tithe's money is going to you to live lavishly. But I have to live poorly because my mansion is in heaven. Now you ask yourself, are you going to have to pay rent in heaven too? Because why the fuck would you need a mansion when you're in heaven and you don't need one here now? You're in a tent now, but you're going to wait till later on. To get your mansion. While they have their mansion in private jet right now. With your money. It's supposed to be a store pantry. But you all know that it's a cardinal sin to go to your local church. And ask about the money. And see the store pantry. How much goods they got stocked up. Because they're supposed to have something for everybody. They raise enough money to have something for everybody. A hundred and twenty-eight billion in 2019. Pre-COVID, that's in one year they raised that much. Recently, Georgetown said in their survey, the religious institutions collected 1.2 trillion, 1.2 trillion dollars. Now that's more than all the tech companies, their valuations combined. Again, my same question, sisters of the ministry. Have the churches ever offered to pay black women reparations for their atrocities? that were committed at the hands of the church towards black women, towards indigenous women, towards Latina women. Have they done that? No. But they've collected 1.2 trillion. That's enough to have given every black woman in this country millions of dollars and still have a surplus. Do you know how much 1.2 tree, 128B, do you know how much money this is? Now you know why we're in the basement. Proverbs 11. It goes something like this, I believe. Bearing a false balance is an abomination to the Most High. This is written in their book, Bearing a False Balance is an abomination to the Most High. Now, I want you to think about this. Don't they humiliate and dehumanize women in the church. It'll be 99% women in the pews, or mostly women in a lot of these churches. And the pastor will dog you out. Oh, especially if you're a black woman. They'll have nothing nice to say about black women. 
and black women. You sit there and you take it when you make up the majority, the overwhelming majority of parishioners. So, when one of our disciples was attacked, and that's what he was, he was an attack for being truthful and honest about the dealing of a church and the leadership. They went on the attack. They're hunting former parishioners of their own faith because they're not espousing the bullshit anymore. Or you have no idea how many people are running for the hills. They're like, it doesn't make any sense. What I'm reading is not what my pastor has ever told me. It's not making any sense. Why are they so anti-woman? Why do you think that is? Now they say the zealots amongst them. They say that women are the weaker sex. It's in the Bible. Women are the weaker sex. That's what they say. But we've never been pointed to this and read it ourselves. Nobody ever points to it. They just say it alludes to it. But alluding to something and actually saying it is two different things. What it does say, they can't explain. Now all of these pastors will tell you when you ask, what does it mean? What is the role of a woman? They'll say, it says that a woman is a helpmate. So you have to ask yourself, why would this supreme being create a helpmate? What is a helpmate? Someone that assists you, right? Helps you. Now, maybe the answer is in the question. You're asking why would something that knows you create something to help you? Maybe it's the fact that men need a lot of help and that's why women were created. To help me. Hence the word help me. They don't want to hear this. That's really traumatizing for them. I'm telling you. It shakes everything up. Because then they couldn't do their bullshit game with you. Then you would know. That they're the ones that need the most help mental health, psychological health, perspective on things that they don't see or understand. And here it is, the individual that doesn't believe, we're talking about men here, that they need help or require help for anything, gets created a help me. Make that make sense. If you don't need help, why create it? And you're the one that sees in there that the Supreme Being makes no mistakes and that you're all created in the image of the Supreme Being. You said it. I didn't say it. So that would mean that women are goddesses too. I'm just saying. You know, we're going to have to play Carmen San Diego. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? We're going to have to do Sherlock Holmes type investigations. I think the only way to get to certain individuals. Because they're so damn stubborn 
and full of bullshit. It's the completely embarrassing. Completely make a mockery of their claims of greatness. I was like, what publicity stunt should I do to really embarrass the institution that says it does the most, but nobody has ever seen it do jack shit? What can I do to embarrass this shit? And I said, wait a minute, tides, 10 to 20 percent. So let me go from neighborhood to neighborhood, knocking on every church door and asking them to let me see the pantry house for the children in the community. I want to see the food because then I can tell the people the church has the food. Go to the church. They have your provisions. All of it is available in the storehouse. It's for all the children. So it doesn't have to just be for your church parishioners. It doesn't just have to be for your friends and your family. It said all the children. Very clearly. That was made abundantly clear. So even people that don't even believe like you. They're still a child of this supreme being, according to the logic that they interpret. Women have been getting a real bad deal, a real, real rotten deal, and people know it. And people are sick of it. You know this. And this is specifically to the women of the ministry. The sisters of the ministry. Who have separated and gone your own separate way. You know this when you were in the institution. When you were putting up with the abuse. The violence. The misogyny, when you were putting up with it, oh, they were singing your praise. You're such a sweet, beautiful woman. You're a Holy Spirit. You're a blessing in disguise. The rest of these worldly women are wicked. You'll notice they were singing your praise when you were part of the cult and in the institution. But the moment you want to put on some music and dance, the moment you want to do some poetry, the moment you get tired of hearing that you're less than, that you're inferior, that you're nasty, the moment you get over that bullshit that the church pumps into you nonstop, that causes nothing but depression and anxiety, the moment you leave, then you become a witch, a Luciferian, a devil worshiper. Now this range of emotions with these toxic masculinity pastors and elders in the church, this can happen like Drake. They can go from zero to a thousand real quick. Because on Wednesday, you can be in the church, in the institution, the cult, being a loyal drone and robot. And by Thursday, you can start to question just one teeny aspect. And then you're saying that a witch has control over your mind. You start hearing the absurdity from them. You're starting to listen to the wicked world. The beast has a hold of you. 
You know all the bullshit, the fear and control tactics that the business uses to keep you an ignorant employee for life. Because that's what it is. It's the greatest business model ever. And it uses fear and control. If you do this, you're going to hell. And naturally, because it already has built into it misogyny. You know, the back to the garden bullshit. When this supreme being supposedly asked Adam, why did you consume something that I told you not to? Common English says that he told this supreme being. He blamed the woman. He said the woman that you gave me told me to do this. So they've been blaming women from the very beginning. For everything. No accountability. And then what did you see happen again? The lunatic from mar a He said it's Nancy Pelosi's fault. That the insurrection happened. It's the mayor of Washington D.C.'s fault. Mario Bowser. The two women. You allowed it to happen. I'm the commander-in-chief. Everybody knows that the buck stops with the commander-in-chief. But no accountability. It's the women's fault. Back to the garden. Same bullshit. Different day. Never any accountability. Rampant sexism. You deserve better. And that's why a lot of people especially women, especially the women who've been in the ministry the longest, are starting to rat out the whole institution. They're like, oh, it's Satanists. Satanists don't even go to any place. They don't know where they go. The biggest complaint is not coming from a small, tiny minority. The biggest complaint is coming from inside the institution. They're saying this is crazy, the way you're treating us. Do you know why they're attacking and hounding a good disciple of the ministry who when he was there, they had nothing nice or bad to say about it. This person was spectacular. And now that he's parted ways and sharing how deeply misogynistic the institution is, now they're saying they're going to take him out at the gas station. We're going to choke him out. We're going to put one in him. This is a good individual who's repented and said, no, we've got to stop beating up our sisters, figuratively and literally. Can you imagine? I know they didn't think it was going to get back to us, but I told you, everything always returns back to us. Can you imagine a sister in the ministry who's been going to church? This is not somebody I know personally. They've been going to church and they're a part of the cult. And one of the elder men in the church body slams this woman. And at Sunday service, they decide to say that the woman, this elder, body slam, the sister in the ministry, she can't come to church. But 
the next Sunday, he's back sitting in the pulpit. They let somebody who body slammed one of their own sisters in the ministry. The very next Sunday, sit in the pulpit. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And then they're like, well, it's that owl that's causing trouble. He's telling women to disobey. She's telling women to disobey. They're telling women to disobey. That's what they're saying about us. We need them destroying this. We can all see it's clear. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that that be allowed to go? They know that it's not right. But they can't help themselves. And then when women, non-binary, transgender, non-conforming, questioning and queer and intersex. When they come and hear about those type of things, they say, this is not for us. We won't be accepted here for who we are. Even though technically we're supposed to be because we're all the children and we're all supposed to have access to the food store. Sisters in the ministry need to stand up to this and say no more. No more degrading us. No more humiliating us. None of it. When you stand up by not fighting physically, but deciding you're going to do something different, something radical and dramatic. You know, you should never give as a woman your full body, mind, and soul to a man. Never, never, ever. Never give devotion completely to an institution or a male. In the way religion is structured, it's obligated for women to do such. You have to listen to what your pastor tells you, or else you're just a bad parishioner. So if your pastor, well, has an affair, he's always in the right, because he's, well, the conduit to the Most High. That's the bullshit. You know, that's the bullshit that they tell you. I'm keeping it real. I'm the realest owl you'll ever see in these streets. You're giving your whole devotion to a man. You're putting everything into one individual. Now, it's not like the church doesn't have a bad track record when doing such things. You go and you look at what happened when women, men, children, families, put their whole mind, body, and soul and devotion into one individual. 
you go and you look at the end result. Have you heard of Jonestown and Jim Jones? He was a breakaway religious sect that started in America but left to go to Guyana. It didn't end too well for over 914 individuals. Jim Jones decided that he was going to poison and force suicide on everyone who was still there. So he used big strong men who were armed with weapons and held down women and children and forced them through syringes to drink Kool-Aid he had laced with cyanide. That's sort of kind of where the old phrase comes from. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Because Jim Jones, a radical, lunatic, insane, fringe, fanatic, forced people to suicide. And those that refused and fought, he had executed on site. This is the end result, sisters in the ministry, of putting complete blind allegiance in a man. You just cannot do it. And you're not supposed to do it. And it needs to stop. A lot of times, women are the driving factors of colds. You'll find a lot of women who have been swept up in colds. And what you often, often, often find is all of these colds are maintained by individuals that claim to be hearing something from the Most High. And they all happen to be, well, me. This individual, the body slammed the sister in the ministry. She's the ex-wife of a pastor. So the pastor of that whole church knew about this. And he let this man come back into the pulpit the next Sunday while they banned her from coming to church. This is why you have a Violence Against Women Act. Because the church commits so much violence against his own sisters in the ministry. And it needs to stop. And the only way it's going to stop is if the sisters of the ministry, if you all, all stand up and demand that it cease and desist, that they can't treat you like shit anymore, that it's 2022 and it's the year of the tiger, rampant change. Change for the better. Nobody, nobody has bore the brunt of the inhumanity like black and indigenous women in this country. The church you raised. One hundred and twenty-eight billion in two thousand nineteen, and you provided no reparations to Indigenous and Black women. No, your history of what you did to Black and Indigenous women. 
every abomination that you can think of and probably many that you can't even think have been orchestrated and conducted by the church, the American Christian church towards black and indigenous women in this country. You have the money to pay restitution and repentance. You should use it. I was reading a story about a church in Maryland that decided that it was going to start paying reparations from its endowment fund. The church was started by segregationists and slaveholders. It definitely has the records proving all of the atrocities it committed towards black women. And they said that they're going to use their endowment to start off by paying 500000 towards reparations for black women and citizens in the area. Five hundred thousand is not even a blimp on the radio of a hundred and twenty eight point one billion. Black women, you have to make sure that the church humbles itself and makes some concessions at this point. When you say that $128 billion is set aside for the store pantry of the children. And you know how you treated black women when they were children in this country. The vast majority of the set aside should go to black women. There shouldn't be any black women in this country that are struggling if the church was really in the right, operated moral and just. But now you know that isn't the case. So you have to stand up and demand it. You know, we say in order to repair the nation, you have to do reparations now. We went from city to city, Tulsa, where the Tulsa massacre happened. Stop lying about Tulsa. We hear a little bit now, but we still don't hear the truth. This whole conservative notion, and I told you, you can't spell conservative without con. The word C-O-N. This whole conservative notion that if you just give money to provide the black Americans, to create opportunity zones, that'll make America great. Maybe again, who knows? But that's bullshit and it's a lie. Tulsa was a huge opportunity zone in America for black Americans. It was considered the Black Wall Street, for goodness sake. Everyone in this country who needed money was getting loans from black bankers. And what did white America do? What did the pro-life Christian Americans do? They bombed the fuck out of Tulsa. They flew private planes and jets over Tulsa dropping bombs on American citizens. 
black people had opportunities on us. And white America, you bombed it. So let's not even with this whole bullshit. 128 billion. And you have black women, elderly, disabled, senior citizens, in tents, all across America, in Phoenix. They have a huge homeless crisis now. Black women are getting evicted from their apartments. They're in their 60s, in their 50s. They can't work. They've had COVID. In the church, nobody has come to these people's aid. Nobody has even offered a food basket. And these bastards raised the 128 billion. Georgetown Steady says it's 1.2 trillion that all religious institutions raised in America. And you haven't seen a red hot dime of it. If they don't give you the money, I want you to know we stand We stand. We stand prepared to take it. I'm going to go from community to community, knocking on the church doors, inquiring about the pantry. I want to see all the provisions stocked up for the children. You raised the 128 billion. You can't possibly have spent that much money. Nobody knows where the money is. We're going to do Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty. I'm going to grab Watson. And we're going to find the money. We're going to look high and low. You don't want to see me come outside, so make it right, or else we're coming outside, and it won't just be me. We'll all come out, and we'll be on a Robin Hood sheet. And you know, Robin Hood did the reverse. Robin Hood stole from the rich and gave to the poor. The only bastard I know that was brave enough to steal from the rich and give it to the poor. They don't say that about the church, sisters in the ministry. They say that about Robin Hood. And in 2022, they might start saying it about the Purple People's Act if they don't get their shit together. Remember, we're targeting for December 26th, the day after Christmas. Reparations by Christmas. That's what we said. It has to happen in the Empire. If it doesn't, you're going to lose everything. Sisters in the ministry, you got to make this happen. Organize. If you have to, go to D.C. Five million strong. They can't ignore five million people on the Capitol Mall. Demanding that they be compensated. That they be provided and cared for. Black women didn't get the right to vote till 1965. They were paying taxes without any right to representation. 
Congratulations to Katanji Brown Jackson. It took 232 years. But if you think that's going to be enough, one individual, What are you nuts? We've got to get this done. We all know we've got to get this done. Sisters in the ministry, don't go for any more of this bullshit. This cult like bullshit. Stay laser focused. Get what's old to you. Get what's old to you. This is about repairing the nation. In the American church, you have 128 feet. You can definitely play a critical role in financially repairing this nation. You have a moral obligation to do so.